folks. So, lo and behold, we found far more, far more appropriate stuff here. Women in Games Austin. Here is the one in charge. Hi, I'm Heather Ross, and I have a Women in Games Austin. I relaunched the Austin chapter because um, we're an international organization. We relaunched it about five years ago, and I've been running it ever since, and we've grown it. We had a, um, each year, we had, last year we had a conference called TwigCon, Texas Women in Games Conference, and it was very successful. We had 150 people show up, and it was at the Texas State Capitol, which is a beautiful place to have a venue if you ever need one. Um, and what we do is we really work on providing support for people that want to um, get into the games industry or that are already in the industry and need community and support and resources. So whether it's have needing somebody to be a mentor, um, especially, or if you just are like the only female or LGBT person or my minority of any kind, like I have epilepsy, so for me it's really, and I'm also pansexual, so for me I'm, you know, a trifecta minority and I'm the only female um, at my company. Um, and uh, it is a small company of 10 people, but it still shows that, that you know, if it's that way at a small company like that, it is very consistent the larger you get. And some people will feel like that and be, feel very, you know, alone and lost in the time that's out there, unless they have community and support like we have. There's currently, from my understanding, not exactly an LGBT specific, specifically focused group, which really concerned me. So, which is why I made sure that we, you know, we are providing support the best way we can. I would love to see an LGBT focused group um, organization in the future in the industry. But until then, we're going to continue to do what we can to provide support. So, um, our, all of our events are free, except for TwigCon, the conference. Um, we did charge um, fee because it does take a lot of money to put on a conference, as Haven Pond does. Um, and uh, we do take donations. Um, but everybody's welcome to attend as long as you are respectful of each other and that you are, um, and you ask questions and you, you know, are um, just kind in general. Um, we do not like stereotypes because they are very harmful. Um, we were here, we did uh, the first year and we also did a panel where we, we did each uh, we did several of the letters of the LGBT community, um, and two people that had actually transitioned um, while they were working at EA, and they talked about how it was a positive experience. And then we had, um, uh, and then I moderated the panel, and it was a really solid conversation, and it was very popularly attended. Um, I hope to do one next year, but I just didn't get around to it this year. Um, do, you have any, do you have any questions? Well, um, have. Have you been able to do this at other cons as well, or is Haven Con the only place where you really get a chance to let your voice be heard? Um, no, we've done actually a lot of stuff. So we got um, more women into the UT um, like his, uh, historical archives, so you can get um, uh, you can get stuff in there. But they mostly only have men, so we got um, more women into it. Um, and then we also um, uh, we've also done panels at. Um, uh, the, there was a conference that was here for a bit and then it went away and then we also had done them at, uh, we uh, had a table a couple weeks ago at Pondy Madre, which is at uh, Aikens High School and it focuses on mostly um, uh, uh, Spanish speaking students and mothers, so their parents and their mothers would come with them and they would come around and find out information and resources and things like that. So we, we do a lot of stuff. We have uh, we also work with other organizations like the International Game Developers Association we'll partner with and we'll have um, panels. We've done them on audio, we've done them on, um, we try to like talk to make it more normalized, to like diversification to be more normalized because sometimes when you, like we've noticed at conferences, if you have like diversity over here, like in a separate space, and then you say, well, who's going to go to that? People that are minorities. You're not going to get people that really need to know about it to actually go to those things. 
this. So it actually works better if you actually diversify the panels, if you make it institutionalized, where, okay, you have to have, you know, the panels have to be this diverse, you make it a rule. South by Southwest has been working on it to where that's just what you, you see. If you see it all the time, you just become used to it, and you just think that's just how it is. But if, if like that's why when people would always see all white straight males like all the time everywhere in the industry, that's what they thought it always had to be was like and had to be like. But if you see it, you know that way instead of it being like oh, a lot of people feel like it's shoved in their face when you're just talking about something. But if you actually. Um, I don't mind people doing, like, here's a panel about women in the gaming industry, but often those kinds of things tend to be shifted towards, oh, well, you know, why are you causing problems for guys, or, you know, what's it like to be a woman in the industry, and it's like, well, what's it like to be a person in the industry, and what, it's, or you don't really tend to focus on what people have actually accomplished. So, you know, like, you know, you don't always get asked about, okay, well, what have you done? What do you, what do you, in, what are your interests? What do you like to do? What is your next project? So you get asked more about you know, more gender specific things and when guys don't get asked that as much. And it's, it's a little bit frustrating. So we, we have a different approach and we try to get, we have everybody come together so they can really network and talk and enjoy each other and, you know, see bosses in the industry. Well, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hopefully this becomes more of a normal thing instead of just, oh, there's a girl here. Yeah, you know, we're, we're an international organization, but it's, it's, it's really hard because so many, you know, so many people want stuff from us, and it's really hard to, you know, um, when there's, it, we get stretched thin because there's so much need, and there's not, like, you know, everybody that's involved pretty much becomes, like, targeted as a speaker or somebody that has to be outspoken about it um, automatically if you're a woman or if you're a minority because they're like oh hey we need you to go on tour um, instead of actually having the option to do it if you want to or not you shouldn't have to speak out about something if you don't want to but um, because I think some people that that's just it, it's not everybody's thing and it shouldn't you shouldn't be forced into it but a lot of people are forced into it because uh, there's like there's been people that have had horrible things happen and um, then they like they were having a happy career, a happy life, and everything like that. And all of a sudden, they're forced into a spotlight that they did not want. And you, it's really hard to go back from that, you know. Um, and I, I really hope that one day is entirely gone. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank you very much. Once again, that is Women in Games Austin uh, at W I G I Austin at Twitter and. Check him out.